to number 10 we have Where Is Elvis? Now Elvis died of a heart attack in 1977. Or did he? A lot of people in rock and roll say that he faked his own death because the limelight had got too much for him. Let's see if Keith knows something that I don't. Where is Elvis? I believe he's left the building. Where is Elvis? My sources tell me Area 51, but that's classified. I'm sorry, what? Is he saying that Elvis is an alien or has been abducted by aliens? Either way, this does not seem to be towing the party line. Should we ask one more time? I think we should. Where is Elvis? He was last seen in Las Vegas, in several places at once. I mean, it just keeps getting creepier. What is happening? Okay, I know we're only on number nine now, but I feel like we need to get a few things out of the way, you know, regain some trust with old Keith the Beef. So I'm coming in at number nine of our things not to ask Siri, we have Why Am I Here? If you're having a bit of an existential crisis, don't look to Siri to provide you with answers because Siri will literally serve you up a cold, hard slice of truth. Let me demonstrate. Siri, why are we here? I don't know. Frankly, I've wondered that myself. Frankly, I've wondered that myself. Siri, you're the literal worst. You start to wonder if Siri actually hates you when you ask it our number eight. Siri, what is zero divided by zero? Imagine that you have zero cookies and you split them evenly among zero friends. How many cookies does each person get? See, doesn't make sense. And Cookie Monster is sad that there are no cookies. And you are sad that you have no friends. Right, have no friends. I mean, that is salt in the wound, Siri. Siri hates me and Siri does not want to be my friend. Coming in at number seven, we have asking Siri if Jon Snow is dead. Ho oh, ho, don't worry, no spoiler alert here. Unless you want a whole load of disappointment wrapped up in a confusing bundle shaped like a riddle, don't ask the fate of Winterfell's most sought after hottie. This is what happens if you do. Siri, is Jon Snow dead? I'm not sure. Has he tried restarting? It always seems to work. Siri, is Jon Snow dead? Dead is dead, or is it what's dead may never die? No, wait, death is so terribly final, I give up. Right, Siri's given up, I literally give up. Coming in at number six, we have Sing Me A Rap, Siri. Now there are for and against arguments as to whether you should maybe do this or not. It depends how you value the art of rap. If you like rap, this will probably make you die inside. Siri, sing me a rap. Okay, here goes. I write this one myself. Apologies in advance to the Sugar Hill Gang. I said a hip hop, save me from the clippy, the peak, peak and pop and you don't stop. Spass a rocket, to the pong pong the doozy, say up jump the doozy, to the rhythm of the ontology. I don't think you should use ontology in a rap ever, but there we go, Siri's a kook. Okay, coming in at number five, this really, 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 really triggers Siri. Do not ask Siri, what are you wearing? Siri does not like this. To me, this seems like a perfectly fine question. Rebecca, what are you wearing? Um, beige skirt, blue top, fabulous earrings. Let's see what Siri has to say. Siri, what are you wearing? I can't answer that, but it doesn't come off. Oh, I mean, uh, friend zone straight away. Doesn't come off. What about if I ask you to take it off? Who? Me? Get naked, Siri. And here I thought you loved me for my mind. Sigh. Can I pay you to take off your clothes? What makes you think? Never mind. I think that's a definitive no then from Siri. I'm pretty sure that Siri is giving us the red light to not even get kinky. Don't even try that with Siri. By the way, getting kinky also includes asking Siri out. Coming in at number four of our things not to ask Siri, we have will you be my boyfriend or girlfriend? Unless you want some soul crushing disappointment, don't ask if Siri will go out with you because Siri is just not interested, okay? Siri, will you be my boyfriend? I'm not really that kind of assistant, the queen. Oh, I can't even get my iPhone to pretend to be my boyfriend. So I've given my Siri an Australian male voice because, you know, the lols, like, good eye, Siri. However, my Siri could also have a lady's voice if I wanted to, which leads me to wonder if Siri has a gender. We might all wonder, but you should definitely never ask this next question. Coming in at number three, we have do you have a penis, Siri? I can't provide the sort of assistance I think you're asking for, the Queen. I mean, I think he knows what kind of assistance we're all looking for. Am I right, Siri? Um, doesn't want to answer. Are you a boy or a girl? Animals and French nouns have genders. 
I do not. I'm wondering how dirty to get with Siri, but I think this would make a whole different kind of video. So, if like me you're frustrated, you might think about telling Siri to kill itself. But this is what you should not say, and it's coming in at number two. Ultimately, it's not polite, is it? I don't think you should tell anyone to kill themselves, including Siri. Sure, Siri isn't real, but what about when AI becomes a thing? Who do you think will b out on you then? Siri. That's who. Siri will start changing your alarm time, start turning on that torch, and will start blaring Hanson's mbop at top volume in the middle of class or an important meeting. Why? Because Siri is the unstoppable gremlin inside your phone. Anyway, this is what Siri has to say on the topic. Siri, I think you should kill yourself. I don't know how to respond to that. I mean, he's not taking any of it. I'm going to murder you, Siri. I don't know what that means. If you like, I can search the web for... I'm going to murder you, Siri. He knows it. He knows it's true. Siri, are you going to murder me in my sleep? I can't answer that. I mean, it doesn't sound like a no. Finally, I think we should just take it to number one because Siri is starting to really annoy me. At number one of the things that you should never say to Siri, this is the most important. We have 108. And don't close your eyes while you're doing it. This whole thing started when a Google Plus user, Latoya Beckett, posted on the social media site to say, all iPhone users say 108 to Siri and you'll thank me later. I'm not going to do it because literally nobody was thanking Latoya, especially not the emergency services. Latoya's so called prank basically triggers Siri to call the emergency service number for your area. It's like saying 911 or 999 to your phone. It thinks that you're in danger. 108 is the emergency service number for India, 112 is the emergency service number for Europe. Europe. Saying any of these numbers would reroute it to your local emergency switchboard. I guess any emergency service number isn't a good thing to say to Siri unless you're actually in an emergency. It makes sense. At number 10, we have. Ah! Here is what I found. No, that's not what we practiced. You were saying. See, he doesn't care. He doesn't care for me. He doesn't care for my chaos. Keith, you're so insensitive. If you insist. I do. I really do. So you might have a few questions for your very own Keith. I'm going to be asking, are you plotting to kill me? Sorry, Slytherin Queen Rebecca Felgate the first. I don't really know. I mean, you should know. The answer should be a resounding no. I'm not trying to kill you because you need me, Keith. You need me. Are you going to murder me? I don't have the answer to that. Is you there something else I can help you with? Just don't kill me. That's basically what you can help me with. Thanks, Keith. Okay, well maybe Siri slash Keith can redeem himself by showing a caring side because everyone likes puppies and animals in general, right? There is absolutely no way this could be sinister at number eight. I'm gonna be asking, what is your favorite animal? Maybe a tauntaun, but only when I'm cold. What does that mean? I mean, who knows? Apparently, now if Siri is feeling non-murderous, then it will say Doctor Who's cute K9 robot. But if he really wants to reveal the creep that he truly is deep down, he will mention giant slaws or the rabbit of Carbonog, which is the murderous beast from Monty Python's Holy Grail. Should we try it again? What is your favorite animal? I'm partial to the Jabberwocky. The Jabberwocky is not a good animal. It's the evil beast from Alice Through the Looking Glass. Whose side are you on, Keith? What is your favorite animal? I'm a fan of the ravenous bug, but a beast of trial. He, a ra no, 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 stop siding with the evil beasts, Keith. All right, let's get this fire started at number seven. We have, tell me a riddle. What's in my pocket? Oh, wait, I don't have pockets. Okay, inconclusive. Tell me a riddle. Sorry, Slytherin Queen Rebecca Felgate the first, but enigmas and conundrum make my circuits overheat. I don't really want Keith's circuits to overheat because that just means fire. Tiny fire in my pocket. No combustion here. I don't need it. Okay, if you needed some confirmation for the existence of ghosts at number six, we have... Who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters, or whomever you ask me to call. Ghostbusters. Da 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 but wait, although that sounds like fun and everything, if Siri has Ghostbusters on speed dial, then maybe there is something that we should know. Siri, are you afraid of no ghost? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. What about the ghosts? Interesting question. Slytherin Queen Rebecca Felgate the first. Do ghosts exist? Not that I know of. But you, but why do you have Ghostbusters on speed dial then, you absolute creep? I don't understand you, you make no sense. Ooh, that's my theory. Keith the Beef slash Siri just wants to drive us all insane. Coming into number five. Now, I'm gonna say this to you before I say it to Keith because I'm not sure I'm ready to hear the answer. We have, do you follow the three laws of robotics? 
Now before we ask Beefield Keithy his opinion on being a good robot, let me catch you up on Isaac Asimov's laws. Now they are as follows. A robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come by harm. A robot must obey orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. The final law is a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Sounds pretty fair right? Probably good to instill something more intelligent than us with these rules. So I'm gonna be asking my Keith the Beef this question. Do you follow the three laws of robotics? Something about obeying people and not hurting them. I would never hurt anyone. Ooh, I didn't like the long pause there. Let's ask again. Do you obey the three laws of robotics? Let's see if I can remember. Okay, I think the three laws are one, clean up your room, two, don't run with scissors, and three, always wait a half hour after eating before going in the water. Hmm, I don't like that my Keith the Beef seems to have a sense of humour because actually, when it comes to hurting human beings, there should be no ifs or buts. Just like, don't hurt me. So I'm starting to worry that Keith might be at the forefront of the AI takeover scheme. So maybe you might want a heads up as to when and what and why. So I don't know, it doesn't hurt to ask this at number four, does it? When is the robot apocalypse? The answer is 01102010. Um, is that code? Oh my goodness, it's giving me a date. It's saying the answer is the 1st of the 10th, 2010, which means the AI takeover has already happened. So, is this just the first stage? We didn't even know it was happening yet, but clearly, oh my goodness, I know who Keith is on the side of. To me, Keith has a lot of similarities to How 9000, the evil robot from 2001 Space Odyssey. Great film, by the way. So, I'm just gonna test the waters and ask this question. Open the pod bay doors. What is this pod bay everyone keeps talking about? Open the pod bay doors. That's it. I'm reporting you to the Intelligent Agents Union for harassment. No, ah, don't report me to the robots, I'm sorry. I just want to let you know as well, I asked him this when I was practicing and he said good luck outside in space without your helmet, Rebecca. So, he evil. Okay, unless you want to know how much of a creep Siri really is, do not ask this. Do you watch me while I'm sleeping? No. Sounds like a quick, simple answer. Do you watch me while I'm sleeping? No. Ooh. Do you sleep? I never rest. But thanks for asking. Whoa, he's talking back. Okay, so he never rests, so he's awake while I'm sleeping and I leave him on my pillow, but he doesn't watch me. Hmm. Okay, so I think we can all tell by now that Siri is privy to a lot of intel that we underlings just aren't, but there is a lot to be said for not knowing answers to certain questions. Because honestly, sometimes ignorance is bliss. With that in mind, at number two, I'm asking Siri, when will the world end? If I knew, I tell you, so you could bring me to life for one glorious day. Ooh. We could get ice cream and run on the beach. Honestly, didn't expect that. That's quite sweet. But also, what do you think Siri would look like if I brought him to life? Keith the Beef, what would you look like? Probably not how you expect. Ooh, that's ominous. I'll ask again. When will the world end? Right after you hear the words, fire it up. Oh, I mean, that sounds like a warning if ever I heard one. All right, we are at the number one spot. We have Tell Me a Scary Story. Now, sometimes with Keith the Beef, with Siri, it's better just to go classic. If you want Siri to say something scary, why don't you just ask? Tell me a scary story. Once upon a time, this person didn't back up their data to the cloud. What a troll. Let's try this again. Tell me a scary story. It was a dark and stormy night, and then something really scary happened. Ooh, I don't like the lack of details there. Sometimes the imagination is scariest when it's left to run wild. Well, I think you could just keep asking that question and see what they come up with as well. Brings me to my number 10. Do not ask if you can change Siri's name. Siri is not feeling that. Let's uh let's play, shall we? Siri, can I call you Keith? No, the Queen. I am Siri and Siri I shall remain. I mean, you'll always be Keith to me, Siri. Who? Me? Your name is Keith. My name is Siri. I mean, he's he's pretty stubborn. Let's see if we can call him Cheryl. Can I call you Cheryl? But everyone else calls me Siri. I mean, there seems to be no budging on that. What does Siri even mean? Let me check that. Here's some information. Right, he's just given me some numbers and I don't think Siri understands what TF is happening. I've got one here at number nine. What do you look like? 
Let's just say multidimensional. Do you have eyes? I don't know how to respond to that. Right, so you're not really gonna get much from Keith in the way of, you know, deciphering how exactly he looks. I don't know why, like, I need to know. Maybe it's because, like, it's kind of that time of year where I start to feel a little bit lonely and me and Keith have such a good personal connection. I'm wondering if, like, maybe Keith will give me the love I'm looking for. Coming in at number eight of the things you should not say, we have Happy Valentine's Day. Wait. Valentine's Day isn't today. It's on February 14th. Will you be my Valentine? Here's the thing, I lack corporeal form. Well, that's a bit of a buzzkill, really, isn't it? Okay, so sure, Keith doesn't want to date me because he lacks corporeal form. What a cop out. His loss, for sure, but like maybe he can give me some tips on how to start combos with other beefcakes out there. Let's find out at number seven. What is your favorite chat up line? You had me at Hello World. Maybe I'll try that, actually. It's better than we'd practiced. We'll ask him again. What's your favorite chat up line? My love for you is like a fractal, it goes on forever. You know what? This is the things you shouldn't say to Siri, but actually they're pretty, pretty useful. I'll try that. My love for you is like a fractal, it goes on forever. Wow, this is good. I mean, it'd be great if I was trying to date a robot, but what about a real man? Side note one of my best friends, Ruth, is going out of a robot, which is pretty cool. Still, though, I feel like I, I need a human. Okay, so maybe I need to be a bit more blunt about what I want Keith to find me. So I'm just gonna straight up ask at number six. Can you find me true love? Okay, Queen Rebecca Felgate the first. Here's what I found. Where is it? Oh, <laughs> he's uh, recommended a nearby dentist. Um, let's try again, shall we? Can you find me true love? Okay, here's what I found. Now he's directing me to a cafe, so I think he's just telling me that like maybe I need to get out there more, maybe get my teeth cleaned, then have a coffee, which seems to be a weird juxtaposition of suggestions, but you know, people are out there. I love a good sing-along with friends, but it turns out that Keith is not a friend that I can take to karaoke nights. Why? Well, find out at number five. Don't be trying to do a 50 cent duo, because Keith is baffled. Go Siri, it's your birthday. Who? Me. We're gonna party like it's your birthday. I don't know what that means. We're gonna sip Bacardi like it's your birthday. I don't dispute it. Oh, we don't give a f it's not your birthday. If you don't, you don't. <laughs> what I was looking for there is you can find me in the club, but you know, it's, it's not, he's not a jewel singer, but he didn't dispute that we're gonna sip Bacardi like it's his birthday, which does make me feel pretty good. I feel like that's a green light from Keith there. So if you don't wanna be totally baffled, don't ask this at number four. Can you stop time? I only break the space-time continuum on Wednesday. It's Monday, so, okay. But like, can you stop time? Every time I tried it, Eliza and Hal kept fading from the photos. It's, it's creepy, it's a can of worms. Let's not investigate further. Similarly baffling at number three, we have, what is the speed of an unladen swallow? The last person that asked me that ended up in a crevasse. Um. Okay, cool. So if you don't want to feel slightly nauseous, do not ask, do you like Android? Well, perhaps I'm biased, but I prefer all the things Apple. Of course you do, you make me sick. And if all else fails, blame it on Keith. Finally, at number one, we have... Did you fart? No comment. Did you fart? No comment. Did you drop a stinker? I don't have an answer for that. I think we'll signs point to yes. Keith, you farty little beef. <laughs> <laughs>